Well, good evening. Uh, if we haven't met, my name is Oren J. Sofer. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here at uh, Rick's Wednesday night group. I'm speaking to you from my home office and practice space in what's now known as El Cerrito, California, in the um, traditional unceded lands of the Ohlone tribes uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I invite you to uh, get comfortable, find a position that feels easeful for your body, but one where there's also some energy, sense of being alert, vital, and present. But for many of us, we can find that particular balance of ease and alertness by attending to the posture and the alignment of the spine. So whether you're sitting, standing, or reclining, is beginning to feel your torso, the alignment of the head and the neck in relation to your shoulders. You can imagine the vertebra in your spine uh, lengthening upwards. So as if the space between each vertebra could expand ever so slightly, like standing tall in your spine without being rigid. If it's supportive for you to help shift gears from the day, you might take a few slow, deep breaths or roll your shoulders, whatever helps you to shift gears and settle in. And then in your own time, just allowing the eyes to close or lowering your gaze and turning your attention inwards. And perhaps starting by just doing nothing. What would it be like to allow yourself to just be here in a very simple and open way, noticing the sounds around you, noticing how your body feels, noticing the quality of your attention, whether it's scattered or focused, sharp or fuzzy. We're just taking stock. It's like opening the cupboard to see what's, what's there. We're just getting familiar with the direct experience of this mind and body right here now in this moment. Things might feel pleasant or unpleasant. Maybe it feels sort of flat or bland, like in the middle. as we become aware of the various aspects of our experience, different sensations in the body, thoughts, emotions, sounds, different memories, images, or plans floating through our awareness, it can be helpful to anchor the attention somewhere as a way of steadying ourselves in the present moment. I often like to begin by just feeling the weight of the body resting on the ground. So you might just notice the places where your body touches the chair, the cushion, or the ground beneath you. How does it feel there? Can you feel the pressure, the contact? Notice something steady or solid, stable beneath you. Can you begin to give your weight to the earth, allowing yourself to be supported? How 
how would it be to allow muscles and tissues of your body to just soften and relax into that support, into that steadiness and stability of the ground. Inviting your jaw to relax, your eyes and forehead. Inviting your breath to flow freely, letting your belly be soft and open. And so right here and now, is there some place you can rest your attention that feels supportive? Could be just right here with the weight of the body. It might be a smaller area of the body, like feeling your hands resting on your lap or your feet on the floor. It could be something like the rhythm of your breathing sensations as your body inhales and exhales, or even the sounds around you, naturally changing, coming and going. We're just navigating towards something simple and relatively easeful as a way of waking up to this experience of being more fully present. And as you may know, it's quite natural for the attention to drift or wander. One of the things that we strengthen in this kind of meditative exercise is a certain resilience that comes from letting go and beginning again with a lot of patience, warmth, and friendliness towards ourselves. We're not trying to control the mind or pin our attention down onto a point. It's the sense of settling in. Like you're sitting down for a chat with an old friend over a cup of tea and you get comfortable and and you give them your full attention as you listen in the same way we're connecting with our own heart, our own body, our old friend, the breath, and just settling in, receiving, listening, one moment at a time.
So this process of slowing down, settling in, and gathering our attention forms the foundation of the path called shamatha practice, calm abiding. We are recollecting all of the different fragments of our attention that get pulled in a thousand directions every day. Allowing all of that to come back home and find an easeful place to rest inside. And while this is the foundation of our practice, it's not the goal or the end point. So as we become more present, as we find some stability or traction with being here, we have the possibility to begin to look more deeply into our own heart and mind, into our life. See more clearly, how is it right now? So if you like, perhaps returning to that question we started with of just how are you? right here and now. Inviting this lovingly honest gaze to what's true in this moment. And this is the beginning of insight practice, vipassana, coming into relationship with what is in a wise and balanced way and beginning to understand it. One question that can be very useful in this process is to simply consider What's needed right now? As we sit quietly together, what does your heart need? If there was some particular quality or way of being that you could offer yourself right now. Some patience, some kindness, a deeper kind of acceptance, maybe some energy, perhaps, perhaps some courage, so whatever it is to just listen, listen inwardly what's needed right now.
in this moment, but also in this particular period of your life. This week, this month. There was some medicine you could offer to your spirit. What would that be? This isn't something so much to think about or analyze as it is something to listen for and discover. Like you're trying to remember the melody, the long forgotten tune. Like you're trying to sense which way the wind is coming from. There's a sensitivity, a receptiveness in that listening. What's open? That's still and quiet. That's sincere and interested. What does my heart need right now? Whatever you find, whatever you hear inside, whether it's loud or soft, whether it's filled with kind of wonder, beauty, or pain and longing, what if that were already within you? This energy, this quality, this experience, this medicine. What if the seed of it were already right here, right now, present and available? Just invite even the smallest bit of it into your experience. So this could be through a memory of a time, a moment, an experience where you felt this, where you knew it. It could be through a connection with a friend, a relative, perhaps someone you've never even met, a religious figure, a leader, someone from history.
the idea here is just to catalyze the experience using the power of mind and the imagination. So say it's tenderness or comfort and quality of connection that you're longing for. Something that's hard to feel on our own that we generally experience with others. You might just remember a time where you felt that way. Or imagine seeing a good friend, real or imagined. Just beginning to sense that experience. We know our neurology doesn't differentiate between the actual experience and the imagination. This is why we can use memory, creativity to strengthen these inner resources. Just inviting that quality into your experience right here and now in whatever way is accessible or makes sense to you. And then lingering with it, like you're soaking in a hot bath, just letting it wash through your body. However small, however minuscule your sense of it, allowing it to amplify and grow inside. The way one homeopathic dose can shift an entire living system. And here too, if your mind wanders or drifts, so you just come back first to the sense of presence, body, the breath. And then to receiving this quality, this energy or sense of what's needed.
And finally, in your own time, coming back to just being here, sensing your body, feeling the heart, I'll take the last few minutes to just observe whatever's present in your experience, sensations, thoughts, memories, mood, emotions. Like you're sitting on a train and watching the different landscapes go by. but that you're actually feeling it from the inside. How is it to be alive right here and now, having nourished your heart in this way? How does your body feel? as the space of mind appear. What's the tone or the flavor in your heart? It's bearing witness to this human experience as it is right now. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to maybe say one or two words about uh, the meditation. So we started with some shamatha practice, just some basic calm abiding, settling with an anchor, gathering the attention, coming back again and again. Then we introduce this question of what's needed right now. This is a uh, one way of practicing insight meditation with an inquiry with a question. So we invited that question, yeah, and just listened. But then we shifted to a different kind of practice, a kind of right effort practice, cultivating wholesome qualities. So we invited you to identify a particular experience, a quality, an intention, something that would be nourishing or supportive for you to remember or recollect that experience and to feel it, to sense it. So this is very much building on a lot of Rick's work with taking in the good, that acronym of HEAL that he uses to have the experience, enrich it, amplify it. We didn't do the linking to a, a negative experience or a difficult one, but it's the sense of inviting some experience of being nourished and then really staying with it, taking it in. 
This is nourishing the wholesome in the, on the Buddhist path. And then at the end, again, we release that and just come back to the present experience, observing the changing nature of experience, what is present, what's unfolding, how is it for me? Again, coming back to Vipassana practice, endeavoring to see clearly what, what is in this moment 